Hello and welcome to week eight of CNET 54. Let me share my screen. All right, so here we are in the course. And if we go to the week eight module, we'll see what's happening this week. All right, so here's the video that I'm making right now. Uh, we'll go over the lecture in just a moment. We do have a homework eight that's due by uh, October 22nd at midnight. We have the midterm. Now the midterm exam is available all this week from Monday at 12.01 a.m. to Sunday at 11.59 p.m. You have uh, 120 minutes to take the 100 questions. And um, if you look at week seven, uh, there's a midterm review here. Make sure you review all the information on here. Look through all the quizzes, um, all the homeworks, everything we've done up to this point, the labs, and um, it should give you a real good feel for what's going to be on the midterm exam. All right. And then, of course, we have lab on um, our scheduled lab time, and then the troubleshooting for the lab will also be due. All right, so let's take a look at the lecture material. I'm going to try to go through a little bit more information than I have on others. So again, we're continuing um, the input-output devices. And the focus this week is really on flash and removable storage. So there's a lot of background information here about when flash was um, created, um, how it's written. Now, it's different than it is on a hard drive in that it cannot be rewritten over the top of it. So like on our hard drives, the hard disk drives, right? HDD, not SSDs. The data can be overwritten. So if I have a file and then I say delete, it just gets marked as unused or unusable, um, but that data can then be rewritten right over the top of it. With flash, the data has to be erased and then it can be rewritten. So there's a difference there. And um, there's some information here that goes through all of that. Also, I break down the two types of universal gates that are used with flash memory, the NOR gate and the NAND gate. And the NOR works like RAM, whereas the NAND is the most common one. So NAND gates are used on our air, our most of our SSDs and our flash memory, All right? So then there's some information here about the different types of flash, which you should take a look at that and know what's there. Now, um, I say here that SSDs, SSDs have long been predicted to overdate HDDs, but the hard disk drive is really kind of held its own. I mean, if you still need large storage for inexpensive pricing, you can't beat a hard disk drive. Now, granted, it's going to be slower, but there are some areas where you just need bulk storage, and that's where the hard drive is still alive and kicking, all right? So then this information here is talking about the different subtypes of types of the technology used, the single-level cell, multi-level cell, and triple-level cell, and that just refers to how many bits are stored in a single cell. SLC single level is one cell per one bit per cell. MLC is two bits and then triple level is three bits per cell. And they get more expensive as you go, okay? And then there's some more information here about um, trimming and um, defragmentation uh, with the trim command and um, so forth. So as you can see, there is a ton of information in this particular lecture. And I would encourage you to, to read through all of this. Um, just to review, most of you probably are familiar with like compact discs, CDs, uh, DVDs, and Blu-ray discs. And I have a lot of historical stuff. And this comes out of that um, troubleshooting or that uh, computer repair book. Uh, and the, the size, this is a good one to know. It's the Ninth Symphony from Beethoven was used 
uh, for the size, you know, if you say, well, how'd they come up with, you know, um, the size of the um, CD? It's because the, the engineer who did it said, well, let's make sure Beethoven's set Ninth Symphony will fit on there. Just kind of a tidbit. And then Billy Joel's 52nd Street album was the first CD rele released, um, first recording artist to sell music on a CD. Then it talks about pits and lands and tracks and sectors and DVD, Blu-ray. Um, and then it goes into display adapters, uh, which, of course, we had the troubleshooting last week and it had to do with the display adapter. Integrated video, CPU with integrated video, which is the norm now, right? Most um, systems have an integrated, uh, the CPU supports video directly. So it just talks about that and video adapters. And then the next section here, and there's a lot of stuff in here, right? You should be able to identify these ports by site. So like if on the midterm or the final later on, you see a picture and there's no labels, you should be able to match those up. Most of you can do that pretty easily. Goes through the different DVD, um, sorry, DVI-I, DVI-D, DVI-A, um, HDMI, and so forth. So I'm gonna go through this. There's a bunch of information about sound cards, which I, again, I encourage you to read through that. Um, and then, the basic connectors. This you should be able to identify all of these ports by site. So if you see a question that has a picture and it says number one is you should be able to you know pick that out. Um, or what what is this port? What is this port? Um, and so forth. All right. So then I there's a lot of information about USB uh, keyboards pointing devices, and then I end with touchscreen. All right, so that's a brief uh, look at this week's information. Again, remember we have lab this week at our normal time, and then you have to take the midterm this week between Monday at 12 and 1 a.m. and ne next Sunday at 11.59 uh, p.m. All right, take care, and I'll see you in lab, or I'll see you around.